and welcome to The Practical Prophetic, where prophetic ministry is made practical. I'm Beth Wingate, I'm your host, and welcome to the podcast. On our podcast today, we are going to talk about PTSD versus PTPO. So let me first explain what those are, and then we'll jump into our study. PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Typically, that is associated with people who have either experienced firsthand or witnessed trauma, and then how they deal with the effects of that afterwards, which can linger for years and have an impact on people's lives. Typically, we hear about soldiers who have been on the battlefield, and they have experienced trauma related to their activities of being involved in military types of activities, and they come home And later, they have trouble adjusting to civilian life because of the things they have either done or the things that they have witnessed. And so PTSD is a serious psychological problem. And I'm not saying there's not a place for counseling and therapy and things like that. But what I want to offer up today is an alternative. And that is what I'm calling PTPO which stands for Post Traumatic Peace and Order. And so I believe this is a spiritual tool at your disposal that you can use prophetically, practically, to help you deal with the effects of stress from witnessing or being uh, involved in stress and then those post-stress effects. And so let's take this tool, which is the Word of God, and let's make it very practical and break it down. So here's what I have right now. I looked up and did a little research on PTSD, and there are four typical stages of symptoms. That there's some, some say five, but, but generally it's accepted in the psychological world and medical world that there are four stages of symptoms. There is number one, what they call intrusive Memories. Now, these sometimes have different terms, but this is this is the ones I chose to go with because I think these are the most basic and practical and easy to understand, a little more non-medical. Uh, the first is intrusive memories. The second is what they call avoidance. You just you just pretend like it never happened. You know, a lot of people deal with with all kinds of situations that way. The third is what what they call negative changes in thinking and mood. And the fourth is changes in physical and emotional reactions. So based on those four symptoms, I want to offer a spiritual alternative. I want to offer this tool that I'm calling PTPO, which is post-traumatic peace and order. And I want to start with our foundation scripture which is found in 1 Corinthians 14.33. It says, For God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. And so I believe that the Word of God lays out a map, a plan, a guide for us on how to deal with the effects once we've experienced trauma in our lives. Now listen, sin entered the world And because sin entered the world, it separated man from God, and bad things happen. That's why we need a Savior, and Jesus is coming to make everything right. But as a believer, as a child of God, you have access to putting things right already here on earth, heaven on earth, so to speak, inside of your heart. And so I don't want to go too far down that trail, but I want to talk about how you can bring peace and order into your life after trauma and that you do not have to be stressed and you do not have to have a disorder. I believe that God loves us. He wants to heal us. He wants to bless us. And He wants to give us abundant life. We're, we've been on this little bit of a series dealing with the fruits of the Spirit versus the works of the flesh based out of Galatians chapter 5. And so this is really part of this series, but I, I believe this also stands alone to minister to people who have dealt with the effects 
of trauma. Listen, we have a real enemy. He wants to still kill and destroy your life. But Jesus came to give you abundant life, life full of the fruits of the Spirit. So I hope this will encourage you. Let's take these four symptoms and let me offer you an alternative remedy you know people i go uh, into town and i see the uh, the herbal medicine shops and there are so, there are things in there that are wonderful that work and so but you have to uh, be a little more disciplined with them you may have to change your diet you may have to exercise with them and so that's how this works this is a therapy that will work It can even work alongside whatever therapy you're choosing to do. But I'm here to tell you there's a higher way, a better way, and that's always when you do it God's way as prescribed in God's Word. So let's answer each one of these four symptoms of PTSD. So number one was intrusive memories. You know, you cannot change what happened, but you can change your response to what happens and you have to allow the Holy Spirit to heal the pain associated with that trauma and that includes memories and thoughts that will linger or maybe even fear that lingers. We've told this story on here before and you can go back and listen to the episode with my sister Kristen. She talked about a very traumatic car accident that her and my mother were involved in. In fact, my sister was pregnant with her daughter at the time. They had just gone to uh, get the sonogram pictures and they were on the interstate and they're not exactly sure what had happened. Uh, They think the tie rod on the car tire broke. There were some potholes on the interstate. In fact, around that time, two or three different people were, were killed in the same spot. In fact, finally, the state fixed that spot of the interstate. But my sister and my mother were driving on the interstate, and their car began to just she said the car just jerked to one side probably when the tire broke and uh, you know the axle broke and my mom said that the car did not roll like side to side it was end over end long ways and it rolled several times on the interstate and there was a huge embankment with a car dealership below that and I believe a Lowe's home you know homeware store and then the car hit a huge light pole and the light pole fell and the car kind of stopped and wrapped around that and they had to actually cut my mom out the car was all bent up and they were fine they they you know my i think my sister said she got some scratches on her after they released the seat you know the seat belt was released and then she had cut her arm a little bit on some glass but nothing major they were perfectly fine and my mom said that she was they were praying as they were flipping and they felt arms wrap around them she believes it was her angel and that they felt arms just hold them in their seats and they were they were fine and so uh, my sister though after that dealt with some post stress symptoms of, of fear you know not wanting to get on the interstate you know being overly cautious about being in a car and she had talked on that episode about how she had listened to Joyce Meyer and it had been a real revelation to her when Joyce Meyer said that faith means sometimes you have to do it afraid even though you feel afraid faith will cause you to confront those feelings and push through them with the Word of God. And she was able, it took time, it wasn't instant healing. It was a process, it was a discipline. It took It took several uh, several months, uh, maybe even years, to completely conquer that, and, and but she did. And so I'm going to sort of use that example, but there can be all kinds of trauma, and, and you can witness trauma and be very affected. But, you know, there are people who have gone through really horrible things. I know people have gone through abuse and people who have been violated and uh, people who have uh, witnessed, you know, a, t- a car accident where someone died or maybe you've um, had a family member close to you who has had a, a tragic death or something. You know, you can be, it can be an entry point for the enemy to come against your mind, 
to attack you in the area of your emotions and your in your mind, your soul level. And so the first thing, the first thing is those memories. Let's talk about those memories. You know, like I said, you cannot change what happened, but you can change your response. So this is going to be full. This episode is going to be packed with scripture because that's really the only thing I can't personally tell you how to deal with, you know, this particular problem. I have problems I have dealt with, but they not, may not be the same problems you've dealt with, but I know who can, and that's the Word of God. That's Jesus. And so He does have an answer. The Word works, but you have to work the Word. The Holy Spirit can heal your pain. He can heal that trauma in your mind. He can heal you from those memories and that test in your life can become your testimony you are an overcomer you are more than a conqueror you can get the victory over this in your life psalms 30 verse 2 says lord my god i called to you for help and you healed me so simple so basic you have got to take that pain to the Lord. You know, when you get in your, quote, prayer closet, maybe that's when you're in the shower. Maybe that's when you're in your car and you're by yourself. Uh, when you're home alone, maybe you go on a hike and you go out in the woods. Man, let it out. But do that to the Lord. Cry. Get mad. Throw a stick. Whatever, throw a rock. Whatever. But, but get it out on the Lord. Cast your cares on Him. And I promise you, He does hear you. And he will heal you. Psalms 30 verse 2 says that. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 says, But I will restore to you health and heal your wounds. I believe that also means our mental health. The Lord will heal those wounds. You do have to be patient. You do have to let the Lord guide and lead you through that process. Proverbs 4 Verses 20 through 22 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. I believe that includes your mental state as well. The answer is simple. Prayer and the Word, you're going to hear that from me pretty much every time. So if, if you don't think that's a good enough answer and that's too simplistic, you know, then I, I don't know what else I can tell you. I can say it a thousand different ways, but that is the answer. The answer is prayer and the Word of God, communication to the Lord and communication from the Lord. It's that simple. You have to be able to talk to God, and you have to be able to hear from God. And we mostly hear from God through His Word. You can also prophetically hear from the Holy Spirit. You know, we have been stuck. This whole podcast, the foundation of it, is that God speaks to us through His Word and through His Holy Spirit. And the word Naba, which is prophecy in your Bible, means to be inspired of the Holy Spirit. God talks to us. Some people have trouble with that. Yes, he talks to us through his word, but we serve a living God who is supernatural and who supernaturally communicates with us, typically through our five senses. And a dream it is an extension of your five senses because in a dream you often hear and see. So I'm just keeping it really basic. Let's move on. I want to read Isaiah 40, and I'm going to uh, talk about verses 29 and verse 31. Let me read 29. He says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increaseth strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Be patient. The Lord is working on your heart. You keep reading the Word of God every day. If you have to stand in your mirror and read Scripture over yourself in first person, putting your name in the Scripture, let me take uh, this Scripture, Isaiah 40, 31. Uh, let's just say your name is John. Read it like this. John waits upon the Lord. John has his strength renewed. John will mount up with wings as eagles. He shall run. John will not be weary. John shall walk and not be faint. You read it like that to yourself every day. 
And it may not happen the first day. It may not happen the second day. But you keep at it. That's called discipline. You keep at it. And I'm telling you, God is faithful and He will heal us. He will heal us even from stress, even from post-traumatic stress. So the first one was uh, those intrusive memories. You've just got to pray and speak God's Word over those memories. And God will heal your mind. He can do it. You have to have faith. That's why it's called faith. You have to believe and have hope. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Number two, avoidance. Some people want to pretend like it didn't happen. That's why some people get addicted to alcohol and drugs. They want to numb that pain to avoid dealing with it. But all you're doing is delaying the inevitable. All you will do is delay your condition. We don't want to do that. And I'm, I'm going to be just honest with you. Um, sometimes you can go to your family doctor or your, you know, your local clinic and they will give you a prescription for something to calm your nerves. And my personal opinion is all that's doing is delaying your healing. Now, that may be what some people choose to do. I am very particular. I have my own set of views about that, and and I'm not going to go too deep into that. But I believe there's a higher, better way based in God's Word. There may be a time and a place for that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to debate that. But I'm telling you, if you will work the Word, the Word works. God is faithful. The, the, your Word is quick, powerful, and alive, active, working, in your life. So the answer to avoidance here is to confront it. Don't avoid it. Confront it. But you don't confront it. You let the Word of God confront that condition. In ancient Israel, God constantly told them as they came into a hostile land, He always told them that He would fight their battles for them. Now, it didn't mean they didn't suit up with armor and they didn't, you know, but God kept telling them, I will fight your battles for you. And oh, my goodness, we're going through the Old Testament in our Bible study and we're we're in uh, first Kings and we've just been through the judges and and we're in uh, been through Samuel and now we're in Kings and we're in that part of the Bible where God is always fighting their battles for them. And and it's the host of heaven that that fights alongside and before them and defeats their enemies. And that's why they have these supernatural victories that seemed impossible. You know, and in one instance, they're fighting with like plows and farm tools. And it says, you know, if they could see in the spirit The angels were fighting on their behalf. In fact, he said you could hear the angels marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. And just all these supernatural victories. God can give you an emotional, supernatural victory at the war going on inside of your mind with the host of heaven fighting on your behalf. If you will get in his word, pray, let him fight your battles for you. Let me give us some scriptures for that. You got to stand on the word. You just have to obey and rest knowing in faith it is already done. That's our Hebrews 4 moment. Let me sidebar real fast and just reinforce that Hebrews 4 chapter. It basically says a warning not to do what the children of Israel did in the wilderness, which kept them out of the promised land. But if you want victory, if you want abundance, if you want to go into the promised land, then you have to rest in faith, knowing God has already won the battle for you. That's the Hebrews 4 message. Let me give us some scriptures to reinforce this confront your issue with God's word. You know, you're not personally going to confront it. You're going to allow God to confront this on your behalf with the Word of God. Psalms 34, 17 says, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of some of their troubles. No, no, no. It says out of all their troubles. And I believe that includes emotional pain. That includes emotional trauma. That includes nightmares. That includes bad memories, uh, you know, triggers, what we call triggers in society, things that'll set you off. Look, everyone has been through a battle that you know nothing about. 
That's why you should always be kind. There's a famous quote that says that, be kind for everyone around you has battles you know nothing about. That's so true. We've all had different experiences. We lived in a cursed, fallen world. Bad things just happen. That's why we need Jesus to come back and make it all right. And he's coming and he's already here in our hearts. And so uh, let me keep reading. Deuteronomy 130 says, the Lord your God goes before you and will himself fight for you just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Oh, my goodness. He even threw in a little historical reference there to tell you I've done it before. I'll do it again. The Lord is going before you, fighting on your behalf. You have to trust. You have to have faith. You have to have hope. You will get better. You've got to let the Lord fight your battle for you. Let me read uh, Luke one thirty seven says, Nothing is impossible with God. Don't tell me, well, this is so bad, you don't understand. I've been through, you know, I witnessed a murder or you know, I've heard it all. I've seen it all. I've seen God heal people from things that traumatic. God can do it. You have to believe we serve a God that loves us so much. He wants to heal you. You have to let him heal you. Number three, in the PTSD symptom, uh, you know, guides or stages of symptoms, number three is negative changes in thinking and mood. Well, let's address that. In 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6, here's what the scripture says about our thinking and our moods. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That is a massive scripture. You know, imaginations, that's those memories. That's when you begin to play like a video screen inside of your mind. It plays on that screen, and the enemy will try to remind you of your trauma and bring that up before you, like playing a movie inside your mind, and he will torment you with you should have, could have, you know, whatever. And he'll play that over and over. You know, this happened to you. You're a victim. Da, 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 and the enemy will just come at you. Well, the Bible says you have to cast down those imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So how do we do that? What's a practical way to, to put this scripture into practice? Well, number one, of course, is to pray. Lord, take these memories away from me. Lord, do not allow the enemy to torment me. You know, pray. Number two, the word. Now, I believe this is where you have to take the word next level. You have got to confess it out loud with your mouth because you are speaking to your spirit man. You've got to confess it out loud. There is power in speaking God's word out loud. I typically would tell you to, you know, get get that scripture, read it in first person, putting your name in there and reading it to yourself in your mirror out loud. There's the old saying that, that we have two dogs, you know, uh, the old ancient Asian saying we have two dogs on our shoulder or you have an angel and a devil on your shoulder, whatever. But here's how I see it. You are made up of flesh. That's the visible part of you. But the invisible part of you is your soul. You have that that com is comprised of your mind, will, emotions, and intellect. And then you have a spirit. Okay, just like an apple has a pill, the meat and the core, just like an egg has, you know, a shell, a white, and a yolk. It, it, just like the, the paradigm of the temple with the outer court, inner court, and holy of holies. Same, same idea. Okay, your soul man, if you feed your soul more than your spirit, then your soul man will dominate your life. If you feed your spirit man more, then your spirit man will dominate your life. This is so basic and so simple, but so practical. You have got to let your spirit man be stronger than your soul man. <laughs> One of the ways we have our spirit man 
dominate and be stronger is to get in God's Word. I mean, when I'm going through a situation, when I'm going through a crisis or a trauma or whatever, I inundate my spirit. I listen to preaching all the time. I listen to worship music. I put on soaking music. I, Julie True is a fantastic, you can go to YouTube and listen to her stuff. It's fantastic. She just plays music really soft and peaceful and, and speaks the word of God. It's fantastic. I inundate my spirit with God's word. I, I let, uh, you know, the Bible be read to me. Uh, I like the one where uh, James Earl Jones reads the just reads the word. You just, you know, go scrub to whatever, and it's Darth Vader's voice reading reading the Word of God. But anyway, you know, I listen to messages. I, I, I read books. I just, I just immerse myself in the Word of God. That is a discipline that is easy, and it, and it allows your spirit man to be strengthened when you're going through some kind of a thing in your life. Let me give us Mark 11, 22. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's important. That goes right back to Hebrews 4. I won't go too far off that rabbit trail, but doubt is a faith killer. You cannot get in doubt. All right, he says, And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And so you have to start speaking the word of God out loud. That will enable you to change your thinking and put on the mind of Christ. And that's how we respond to those changes in thinking and mood. And by the way, I'm just going to leave this right here. This is something I said to my kids when they were young, and I probably still do. And that is that mood should never dictate manners. You don't have the right, if you're in a bad mood, to make everyone around you in a bad mood. There's an old saying that says, misery loves company. Listen, you got to take charge. You got to be an adult. You got to be a leader. You've got to take charge and manage your emotions. And we do that with the Word of God. And you have to ask the Lord to bring peace into your life. I don't want to move on too far to the end of our message, but but you've got to you've got to manage those. You've got to have discipline. You know there are things that require deliverance, and there are things that require discipline. I'll sidebar right here and talk about this. Uh, people who have been ad- addicted to drugs. They often go through 12-step programs, which is the discipline side, but what they need is that initial deliverance because they have been in bondage to addiction, which I believe is from the enemy because that's something in your life that kills, steals, and destroys. And so they need deliverance, but then after they get that deliverance, they need discipline. And that means going through whatever the 12 steps are and and learning how to think and behave differently. So it's coupling the two together that often makes the difference. So so you may need some kind of, you know, a counselor. You may need a, a, a small group leader. Uh, there's a, a group, I believe, there's a book called Freedom. A lot of churches offer that group. It's basically a, a, discipline of, a d- disciplined form of deliverance where you walk through and change the way you think and apply God's Word and practical steps as to how to, to walk through those things. So there's definitely things that you can do long term to ensure that your deliverance is secure. Okay, number four. It said changes in physical and emotional reactions. Well, the answer to that is to have a spiritual response, not a physical and emotional response. And like I said, we do that by strengthening our spirit man, letting him dominate in your life. The physical is represented by our flesh, the emotional, our soul, and then we have our spirit. You have to let your spirit, man, be in charge, led by the Holy Spirit and God's Word. Your soul, man, your emotions do not have the right to run your entire life. When they do, it will not be good for you. And of course, your flesh, man, should not dominate your life, or you'll just be like almost like a, a hedonistic animal. Just, just It'll be just, you know, whatever... It gratifies you at the moment. If you're hungry, you just gorge on food, you know, or whatever. And so so we need discipline in our lives. That's so important. 
We have to respond by the Spirit. Your emotions have to be subject to the Spirit, but your spirit man has to be strong in order for that to happen. Well, the answer here to PTSD is PTPO, which is post-traumatic peace and order. It's about law versus lawlessness. In 1 Corinthians 14.33, our foundation scripture, it says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. God does not want you walking around in disorder in your life, in stress. Your body was not designed for stress. Cast your cares on Him, for He cares for us. The Word of God is like a policeman over our lives, bringing peace and order, even with trauma, but we have to be subject to the authority of God's word, obeying and right standing with God, allowing him to be Lord over our lives, to bring peace. You know, we, we say policemen, but they're actually peace officers. And we've seen in our nation what happens when there's lawlessness. It's not good. And so let the Lord come in and take command over your mind, bringing you peace. John 8 32 says, if you live in my word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The Lord does not want you in emotional bondage. He does not want you bound up by post-traumatic stress disorder. He wants you to have freedom. God is a God of hope, faith, and love. I'm going to leave us with Galatians 5 22, the fruits of the spirit, which I believe is the answer. Jesus is the answer to post-traumatic stress disorder, and He wants to bring post-traumatic peace and order into our lives. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And so the Lord wants to bring peace and order into your life, heal your mind when you've experienced trauma. And the remedy is simple. It is communication with the Lord through the Holy Spirit. We have got to speak God's word out loud to ourselves because you have got to have your flesh man and your soul man hear the word of God. Listen to worship music. Listen to preaching. Read books. Immerse yourself in the Word of God, and He is faithful, and He will heal you. He is coming to set this whole world right. Jesus loves us. He wants the best for us. He wants to heal your trauma, and you don't have to be stressed and distressed. God wants to bring peace and order into your mind. I hope this blesses you and encourages you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will breathe a breath of life and peace into your mind today and that God will will walk you through this process, that the Holy Spirit will put His arm around you and guide you to peace and order in your mind. Have a blessed day. for listening to today's podcast. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be informed next time I post. Thank you again and have a blessed day.